Hi, and welcome back to Purple Color Life. In today's video, a little bit of a road trip. So we're gonna head over to Kyle's place now. He's bought some new property and he's putting a driveway in and he's doing it with his John Deere subcompact tractor. So today we're gonna see a subcompact tractor put in a culvert for the end of a driveway. Some of you have asked for, and I am doing a little side experiment here. I'm gonna be driving throughout the winter, just regular driving, you know, idle time with Olive in the truck, seeing what mileage we get in the truck over a long period of time. So far, we are at 373 miles and averaging 14.7 in winter driving, cold weather driving. Um, this includes trips to and from work. So, you know, one trip to and from work for me is 165 miles. Now, I don't make that drive every single day. So there'll be lots of times where the truck's sitting in the garage and I'm taking the little truck to work. But throughout the winter, we're gonna keep track of how many gallons of gas we've used, how many miles we're getting per gallon, just regular everyday driving, not taking it easy, all different routes. So we'll get a better idea of everyday driving in this truck, short trips, long trips, cold weather, snowy weather, what our mileage is. So this is a pretty exciting project for me to go over and see Kyle putting this culvert in. This is all kind of stuff that reminds me of 22 years ago uh, when we put our house in and we started out with the driveway and 53 loads, triaxles of shale. Um, so, you know, it's kind of reminiscing on that experience of us putting our house in all that time ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, grapple would be perfect for a project like this. I'll use that MS250 to clear the trees and everything out of the way just to make this path in and start working on the driveway. That little John Deere 1023E can do a lot of work. This would be perfect grapple work. Um, I could have taken my grapple over and used it. It would fit on Kyle's Quick Connect John Deere attachment point, but it does not have a third function. So we could use it as a rock rake, just not as a grapple. And really you need that down pressure of the grapple thumb to grab on things. Kyle, how many hours are on your 1023 now? Uh, over 100. Over 100. Yeah, 110. When you bought it, do you think you'd be clearing land with it to build a house? <laughs> no, I didn't. It's definitely a useful tool. It is, very. Not the perfect tool, but better than shovels and chains. Yep. So here we were just trying to push against both ends of the pipe to get it joined Getting together. And we couldn't figure out how to get it to seal in that position. We tried multiple different ways. 
We tried just manpower at first, and then we tried pushing one end up against the tree and using a tractor. Yeah, I bet this comes up to here. Yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah, it's already not in enough. Okay. Once we thought of, of the idea, Kyle had the idea, of, let's put the bottom of it against the tree. Go push the top of it with the bucket or the tractor. Let's go and get that seal made. You can see the tractor is pushing it together, closing that gap. There it's pretty tight. Um, but we thought it had to go over that first corrugated rib. But then after further inspection, we saw that that is actually all the farther it goes. So after pushing on that pipe in the woods to get it together, we discovered that that is actually all the farther it goes on. We took a tape measure and that's about as much as it goes together. And then the dirt and gravel on top just hold it together. So this is how uh, the pipe looks. Actually worked out really good that the ditch was already so deep here. Kyle will be able to just fill in with uh, scoops of gravel. Here we go, first load of gravel on top of the culvert. After that first load, I remember thinking to myself, wow, this is going to take a lot of time to get enough gravel to cover that up. But it went amazingly quickly. This entire project took probably three hours um, from, from start to finish. Now, Kyle had already cleared out the path to get the gravel over to the pipe, and he had cleared out the end of that woods area, trimmed everything back, and just had to kind of scoop things out of the way. see with that load he's got to back downhill first turn around kind of down on the dip so from the dirt pile here up to where the culvert is Kyle has to make the trip through the woods this road just a little bit too busy to have the tractor out on it This will be a good location for an end of a driveway. It gives you good visibility in both directions. Here in Pennsylvania, we do have the highway department has to come out and inspect where you're gonna put the end of a driveway so that you can have enough visibility. It was really nice that with the depth of that ditch, we didn't have to dig down at all. Now it does have the backhoe. We could have dug that a little bit deeper if necessary but it was just about perfect to lay that culvert pipe in and just be able to backfill around it. We did use a shovel and rake just to clear out underneath it to make it the proper height for clearance from the road into the driveway. So I think so far that's one, two, three, four or five scoops, maybe six. I had contemplated just having them dump the load on the yeah. pipe, but it would have spread on the road. And yeah. 
And the road edge is weak. It is. It's a thin pavement. So how many loads is that? How many buckets? Six? Yep. to go. How many tons did they drop off, do you know? 22, 23. Probably more than 25 the loads. I feel like your tractor is way more stable on uneven ground than mine. And I think it's probably the weight of the bucket on the, the backhoe on the back. Yeah. And I think my cab adds top height. Top, top height to it, yeah. Well, you know, I I keep the bucket pretty low to the ground. Yeah. It doesn't take much. Yep. Well, the John Deere got a flat front tire, probably from driving through, you know, old stubble and thorns in the woods. So I ran back home and got that rigid air compressor. I use that thing all the time. It's perfect for applications like this where you're going to have to uh, be in the woods, away from power. It's even hard to get the 12 volt receptacle close enough to the tractor with a flat tire. Um, so it makes a good tool. Those of you who are looking for a good tool uh, for Christmas time gift for someone, that might be a good idea if they have rigid powered implements. Um, if they have DeWalt, they have a similar type of thing. Um, Ryobi has a similar type of thing. So I'll put links to those down below in the description. But I did switch to the little truck for the trip back because we didn't need the big truck here. I wasn't sure how wet this area would be. It's not wet at all up here along the roadway. So the little two wheel drive truck will do just fine. Having that rigid 18 volt air compressor was really helpful. There were a couple times that we had to refill that front tire that must have had a thorn or a puncture to it. Making some good progress here. I think the goal is going to be to get a sturdy enough base here that Kyle can take the tractor out here onto the base and then towards the end. We don't really quite yet have access to the end from this side of the woods and there's this pretty good size tree stump there. So I think our best course of action is to attack it from here down.
So Kyle said that sand and gravel mix is called a 2RC. And he had about 22, 23 tons of it delivered. We think we're about halfway through it at this point, covering up that section of the pipe. But it's working out just like we had hoped. It packs in nice and tight. He's able to drive out here a little further now. And that's how he'll keep filling down closer to me towards the pipe. Here's a status update on the pile so far. Here you can see that mix of sand and gravel. Once we got started, I wasn't sure if that 22 or 23 tons was going to be enough gravel, but it worked out to be just about perfect. There was a little bit left here at the end that Kyle can use for, you know, if there gets to be low spots in it or it starts to sink in in certain areas, or if he wants to make it a little bit wider in the future. So it was just about the perfect amount for the depth of this ditch to cover that hole. And around here, 22 or 23 tons, that's a pretty typical amount that fits in the triaxle. So if you get a triaxle load of gravel, that's pretty much what you expect. So you can see the driveway is coming along really good here. Lots of good packed in area along the side of the road. Just for an idea where we're going, Kyle's got a plan for his driveway to go straight down through the woods here. We'll take a quick look at that. So he's already cleared a path. You can see he's currently using he has to park down the road there a ways to get his car off of the road. So he's been using this path to get all that dirt up here. But he's also brush hogged with his John Deere 1023. 
this path down through tentative where he thinks the driveway will go down uh, through the woods here. really good we are in a pretty mild section of winter right now this is just the start of December we could have snow on the ground in some years but so far so good nothing on the ground right now a couple snows that came and melted away within the day but you can see here what Kyle's doing is he's clearing out a little bit of space beside where that driveway comes in so he could pull his car in there next time maybe even have some some space to park that trailer that he hauls his John Deere tractor on. So that was a quick and easy adventure with John Deere to get that culvert buried. Thanks for watching. If you found this video informative and entertaining, please give us a big thumbs up down below. Last step here is Kyle wanted to get the aisle kind of cleaned up a little bit, pushed off to the side so that he can have more space to pull in here along the road if he needs to pull in with other vehicles. So there you can see about how much gravel was left after the project. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again the next time. Hi and welcome back to Purple Color Life. In today's video, a little bit of a road trip. We're taking the big truck. That's kind of a little funny. So yeah, those are the two trucks behind us. We've got the big truck and the little truck. Side note, what do I do as part of my day job? I come up with creative names for new products. Obviously I use all that up at work because here at home we've just got the big truck and the little truck. But I did switch to the little truck for the trip back. So there'll be lots of time for the truck sitting in the garage and I'm taking the little truck to work.